Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome in another Ramadan reminder and I am your brother Ziyad. Inshallah, today we are talking about the 10th, the year 10 of Al-Hijrah or the year 10th of Al-Bi'tha. We all know that the Prophet or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Mecca for 13 years after he received the revelation. The year 10 was different. He lost his uncle Abu Talib who was his support and he also lost his wife Khadija Umm al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anha. So the Prophet at that time did not have moral support mental support and also familial support to stand up against Quraysh. So he decided to go to Atayf, a city closer to Mecca, and close to Mecca. He went to Atayf and he arrived there, he talked to the elite and to the Sada of Atayf and they refused his message. Not only that, they also sent their thugs on him to the point he was a ple he was a bleeding or bleeding from his feet and his face and his back after they threw stones and gravels on him he ran away he found this wall and he was seeking refuge in this wall under that vineyard at that time two men they, call, they are called the brothers of Shaiba. Uh, Two brothers, they own that uh, fana. They were looking at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, they empathy, they felt empathy towards him. So they sent their ghulam, their fata, the servant. They sent their servant and his name is Addas al-Nasrani, Addas the Christian. Addas went to the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he had a plate with the grapes. He gave the plate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at him and smiled and he asked him, what's your name? He said, I am Addas. He said, the Prophet said, where are you from? He said, I am from Nainawa. Nainawa is a city in Al Musul, in Al Iraq. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is the village of the Rajul as Salih, the honest man, the Rajul as Salih, the good man. And that Rajul Salih is Yunus alayhi salam, Yunus ibn Matta, Jonah or Yonah, or Yunan in Hebrew, or Jonah in English, or Yunus in Arabic. Yunus ibn Matta. And Addas told the Prophet, Do you know Yunus? He said, I am. A prophet and he was a prophet so Addas was very pleased and he kissed and start kissing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his hands from his feet and from his forehead the owner of Addas told him why Haka Addas what are you doing Addas told them this man meaning the Prophet is the best he ever saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that point decided to go back to Mecca because he did not find what he was looking for in Al-Taif. On his, on his way back to Mecca, he, he stopped for one night, he slept under the palm tree and in the middle of the night he woke up, he prayed Qiyam al-Layl and that's where the jinn, a group of jinn came and they heard the Prophet وسلم, and they ran away fast, rushly to their to their people to tell them we hear this Quran al Ajab. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Surah Yunus السلام, And that's where we are actually talking about today. Allah wanted the Prophet وسلم, to, to learn from the experience he had. And without saying that directly, he gave him Surah Yunus and the story of Yunus in different places in the Quran 
to learn from. Yunus, as we probably know, Yunus alayhi salam was sent to this village Nainawa or Al Musal in Iraq, and after he was talking to his people for so many years, they did not believe in him, they did not believe the message, so he decided to run away. And the verse came with a noon. The noon, the, the man of the whale, the man of the, sh of, the, of the fish, because he was swallowed by the whale, he went off in anger. And in anger is not, it does not give the word, it's, it's, it's justice. Because Mughadib, not only in anger, he also was displeasing Allah by leaving his mission. So that's what Mughadib means. And Yunus thought he would not, or we would not, decree anything upon him. We would not test him after he ran away from his test. So he thought that if he gave up on that mission, he would be having a better life. He, he, little did he know that he was going into another trial, and it could be harsher. It could be more difficult. So Yunus, alayhi salam, traveled from al Musil to the Mediterranean, to a village in Palestine called Akka, as the narrator say. And in Akka, he took that ship in the sea, and in that, on that journey, the ship was in a precarious situation, and it was about to drown. And the people of the ship decided, we need to throw one of us in the sea, so we reduce the weight of the ship. They, they drew lots, and the, the, the decision came on him that Yunus should be thrown in the sea. And the Quran says, he ran away to the laden ship, and he drew lots, and he was among the losers. He was thrown in the sea, and then as soon as he was thrown, he was thrown in the sea. He was swallowed by the whale. فالتقمه الحوت The whale swallowed him. And while he was blameworthy, he was blamed that the ship was about to drown, so he was thrown and he was in pain and in sadness, yet he was in a blame that he was maybe the reason by why the ship could have been drawn. So inside the hut, inside the whale, Yunus alayhi salam said the following, فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He, inside the darknesses, because it's, uh, there are many phases of this darkness from his mouth to his tummy to his, uh, to, to his to inside organs. So inside those darkness, Jonah or Yunus alayhi salam said, فنادى في الظلمات أن لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. He called out with the darknesses, there is no deity except you, Allah. Exalted are you, indeed I have been among the wrongdoers. We stop here. So Yunus عليه السلام left his people without the permission of Allah. Or from Allah thinking that he would end up in a better place yet he ended up in the in the bottom of the sea inside the whale so see he was among the people breathing having nice life but they did not listen to him but he could have stayed with them and kept asking them to 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 worship Allah and to believe in Allah yet he left and ended up in the in the whale inside the well, in the darknesses, among this harsh environment. We all know that inside the belly, there are so many chemicals that even erode the iron, the steel. So the Prophet ﷺ learned that he shouldn't have left Mecca. He shouldn't have given up on the people, even without the support of his uncle and from his wife, Rahmatullah Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anhu. So he went back to Mecca and learned that I should not give up on my mission. 
And the takeaway from this lesson, from this story, for every one of us, life is always difficult. Don't tell me life is easy. We are not brought here to this dunya to enjoy life as much as we are tested with, with tests and trials to succeed and go, inshallah, to the eternal happiness. So I remind myself and you, we should not despair of being in tough situation. We, our life like this container, familial issues could drain some of our energy. Sibling issue could drain some of our energy, other, uh, other, uh, our part of our, other, our energy. Work issues could drain part of our energy. To the point we end up in deficit of our energy. We don't have energy. We don't have mental support to stand up and speak out for our own mission. Where you feel this energy is from the Quran. Our deep understanding of the deen and the faith should always be adding energy and surplus to the point where you balance the negative energy coming out of your body or your nafs with the positive energy coming from this deen. That's why where I actually were going with this. So if you keep draining your energy from the life and the affairs around you, you end up going to the mental institute. You cannot stand up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Quran, gave us the, the, the faith. We need to deeply understand it in order to always add positive energy to our container, to our nafs. As Muslims, we are a group of people. When we say, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Ihdina as a group, stick together. Stick to your people, stick to your family. Stick to your own mission that you are going to bring positive, positive change to your life and to the life around you. Do not just give up and go and say, well, if I don't succeed here, I might succeed somewhere else. You don't know. If you don't like your wife, you might find a better wife. If you don't like your husband, you might find a better husband. If you don't like your brother, or sister, you might find better ones. No, that's not how things work. Stick and do your best because this is your test in life, is to be tested with the people around you. And inshallah, Allah will always get you what you want. At least you try, but always stay on that track of trying to change people and yourself around you by learning the deen to support yourself and educate the people around you. Everything, every good that I say from Allah and every evil that I say from myself. Allahumma ja'alna mimman yasti'oona al-qawl fa yattabi'oona ahsanan. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.